G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. Today we're reviewing round 10, getting you guys ready for the buys coming up. Talking trade targets, talking bogs and flogs. Let's go! Just done it from nowhere. G'day and welcome and oh no, oh no oh, what no has no no here? Oh, he's using sorry, my gear technical again, difficulties again guys apologies this, for the uh, explicitness on the screen right now if you're watching over on YouTube this is just getting out of hand <laughs> there the, is the maturity levels have just come to a new low what the fuck am I looking at uh, well my name is Mitchell Casey you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy right now I've got uh you know Rory Laird's heat map sitting next to me on screen here. What? The, this is Rory Laird's heat map. This is a different heat map. This actually. is ridiculous. <laughs> the, their penis gate. I think it's an issue. Penis gate, yeah. Penis gate. We need to discuss this because players are just running around on the field trying <laughs> to make their heat map look like a penis. I yeah. don't know what's going it's, on. Uh, it's 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 becoming an epidemic. It uh, really you is. You could say because last week obviously we had the oh, oh there it the, is right so, on screen. Right on cue. So <laughs> Errol is sitting to the right of your screen. Rory yep. led to the left of your screen. Players are th- this is Yes, this is this What is, is going on? I don't know, mate, but it is um it it's it's uh, it's, it's something it, that needs to be looked into. Because <laughs> it's something that needs to be looked into. Two weeks in a row. We cannot have players running around trying to make their heat maps look like penis. It just won't do. It's, yeah. either, it's either that or some boffin down at AFL House is, is hacking the, the system. And <laughs> just, he thinks, <laughs> oh, just I, I don't know what we're doing here. This is ridiculous. So, yeah, so let's get a bit, bit of bloody respectability back into this and let's jump <laughs> let's jump back to the live shot this oh, so childish we are but yeah. yes that was that was pretty funny obviously <laughs> that was pointed out to us by uh, a <laughs> listener yeah <laughs> thanks to the people on Twitter for letting us know if you do find any other penises in your in your <laughs> travels do let us know because that's just right up our alley yeah <laughs> let us know if the uh, the penis gate is uh, continuing into round 11 but uh round 10 aside from uh, heat map uh, you know, penises. It's um, it's been a big week again. A lot of big yeah. scores out there. Uh, how did you go this round? Uh, Respectable, yeah, yeah. I scored yeah. um, scored just shy of twenty four hundred and moved me up three thousand ranks, which Ooh. is good. So I'm inside the top ten thousand. Okay, the, for the here first we go. Time. So here we go. The ox longs. Are, well, it's still the ox shorts, but okay. maybe I'm maybe I can maybe change it back the to the 10K, ox longs. You know, the four digits. That's, I don't that's want to. Ge- I don't want to jinx it now. I got to keep it keep it as the ox shorts for now. But yeah, going get, right. Get through the buys, maybe. Once you get through the buys, if you're still if you're still looking all right, then maybe you can see so how we go. You can rise back up. What about yourself, mate? Yeah, it went, went pretty good as well. Um, you know, if it wasn't for this bloody uh, last rookie in my field, could have had a very big round. But I moved up as well. Just got to the 2400, 2404. And uh, yeah, it went from about 2400 to about 1600 in terms of rank. So right. there, was that, there was that really nice sweet spot. I think it was GWS played that last game. Yep. And I think I got as high as like 350 <laughs> or something like <laughs> you that. You should have and, screenshot of that. And then uh, <laughs> GWS and the... Um, uh, St Kilda team playing it, and it was obviously Steele, Cogs, uh, Taranto. Uh, sorry, yep. not Taranto. Um, Tom Green, you know, uh, Josh Kelly. All these guys playing that I don't have. <laughs> and it it's just, just plummets. Plummets it? after that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a good round. A couple of big premiums went big. We had some good trade ins uh, from the weekend. And uh, yeah, so should we talk and upwards? Yeah, before we do bogs and flogs, we'll talk quickly about the content creators cup. So we've mentioned yeah. it a couple of times. We've even got a little graphic on the screen now because we seriously well, we s- butcher this every time, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do. It's- especially myself. You, you've been all right, but obviously uh, we've got the graphic here to help us now. So um, the content creators cup we've spoken about a couple of times, and um, it's Guesty over there in in Perth doing good things. Um, looking to donate some money to charity. All the sort of content creators are in one league and battling to um, get their hands on on some cash to donate to charity. So it's all for a great cause. And you can see on the screen now some information there for you to access yep. um, Guesty's Infinite Wealth program. So if you go to infinitewealth.com.au forward slash AFL, yep. you can find all 
all the info that you need there and um, you know help to support his business because his business is supporting um, us and charities. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll probably if you're listening along on uh, watching along on YouTube, we'll probably drop a link in the comment uh, in the description below. You can just hit that easy pop over across and uh, get your free um, financial advice. How did you go in the uh, the Content Creators Cup matchup this week? You it was a, you got a close one. It I was tight. I was I was pucking up like a snare drum there on Sunday <laughs> afternoon <laughs> when uh, because Roy had all of Kelly. Um, yeah, he was chasing. Green down. and Cornelio, and yeah, he was coming for me. Um, but the Oxlong stood firm, as they often do. Oh, and stood uh, up. yeah, so got him by, would have been only 15 or 20 points in the end. So, and I think you're, you're bloody flying up that ladder, aren't you? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm doing all right. I've, I just had the, uh, I think I had a one loss at the very start of the year when yep. I went up against Stato. Last week when I brought in, Mills had my second loss, but outside of that, been going pretty strong. So, as the ladder sits right now, I am. Tied second with Destroy. He's got me by percentage, um, by less than 1%, by the way. So very, very tight. Yep. Uh, he's got Xavier Ellis this week, so that might take another, another boost up. <laughs> <laughs> Drive by, got that save. <laughs> but uh, yeah, both Roy and I and uh, Statesman, who all three of us are on this equal score uh, behind um, Guesty, who's you know winning his own comp. Yeah. And I'm um, sitting fourth in the overall ladder, just 500 <laughs> spots behind Destroy there. So... Yeah, going, going pretty well. Hopefully, I can win some cash for a charitable course. Yeah, very nice. It's all good fun. Now, let's jump into our first segment. And the winner of the Norm Smith medal. You're an embarrassment to what you do, mate. You're an embarrassment. The bogs and the flogs, mate. I feel like, again, another one of those weeks where I had the uh, I had the bogs this week and yeah. there was a few layups for me to have. So. Oh, absolutely, mate. When you've got players pumping out 150s, it's yes. hard not to award the bog, isn't it? Especially, let's start off with this guy here who um, was probably, in terms of like a pure footy sense yep. and in watching a game, we sat down to watch this game on a Friday night together and Zach Butters just put on one of the all-time performances in the wet clean I think his disposal efficiency was like 78% and it was torrential rain at times uh, goals tackles marks like this man just dominated this game and uh, yeah he's uh, a definite deserving ball again someone who when we traded him in put up a couple of 80s but the last three weeks he's absolutely repaying our faith in uh, as a trade target yeah, that was one of the all-time games, and I think the Twitter narrative afterwards supported the fact there were some stats that came out that put him in a category with some yeah. pretty handy players. Yeah, so, absolutely. And as a young fella too, I think he's still only 22 years old or something like that. So, Zach Barters, hats off to you, mate. That was a very, very impressive performance. Now, on the other end of, th- on the other end of things, a little bit of floggery from, uh, let's call them a point of difference, Ruckman. <laughs> yeah. If, if there's people out there who are owning Max Gorn, they're wanting him to not do too much worse than than your Marshall or your English, whichever other one you own, and yep. he stunk it up a little 66. bit. 66. 66 would have oh. been a hard pill to swallow for owners. So um, I'm not an owner, fortunately, but for those owners out there, I'm guessing that they would have been calling flog on that one. Yeah, it's um, it's a very tough one because he was he was in the ruck contest as well, like 53 ruck contest to Brody Grundy's 30. So... He had the role. He had a good matchup going against Scott Lysett as well. Not the Teakle yeah, that we uh, we had the, the week before, but still Scott Lysett is a positive matchup. So you would have expected more. And, uh, you know, probably not the shout that he wants, but shout out to Stato who obviously traded out Marshall yeah. to him. Um, yeah, you've got to be, I'm sure he was not loving watching that game with no. uh, with a very yeah very unique player in Max Gorn. Now here you've bloody stolen my boy in this next game. Yeah, so next game, Sydney versus North Melbourne, the accountant, George <laughs> Wardlaw. Crunching the numbers. Uh, he brought some numbers, mate. And I was sitting there watching, obviously had the two injuries, couldn't bring in a rookie, but sort of had my eye on him for this week and I just was like, stop tackling everyone because, <laughs> man, your price is <laughs> He was is a man possessed, up. eh? He was, he, went, he was really, really, really impressive in terms of, um, you know, as a first game player. Yeah. Uh, had a couple of negative threes as well, gave away a couple yeah. of free kicks to stop that score from even being bigger. Um, but 82 points with nine tackles, 16 disposals. I think he is uh, someone that we definitely all need to target going into you, the buy rounds. You bloody sicko were hoping that he was concussed when he got oh, back. Oh, shut <laughs> you, uh, This guy's a sicko. Oh, no. Un- unvalued. Oh, concussed maybe. Oh, concussed. Just keep him cheap. Well, keep just, him cheap. Just want to look after the player's head, mate. Oh, like, yeah. You know, just, just look after our players. It's all oh, about you, safety over you here. You were so concerned for his head, mate. I'm sure you were. <laughs> now, uh, apart from that floggery in that game, there was some more floggery 
my my heart just broke for North Melbourne fans at the end of this game. Oh. How <laughs> oh, yeah. how can you make this kind of a cock up? This is this is actually hilarious. Like this, yeah. I called out on Twitter. Like, is, was this the greatest tank job of all time? <laughs> because North Melbourne's yeah. almost about to win no, a game. No and, chance. And, Take and the coach is just gone. How many subs have we used? Oh, okay. Let's just go one more. Oh, you're tired? Come no. off. <laughs> I think it, it happened because there were like two subs at the same time. But still. Have you ever seen that before? No. Nah. I've not, never well, not, seen... Not to win a game. Like, you see interchange infringements, but not to win a game. I, I actually... I mean, I probably haven't been watching footy as long as you, but I, I think that's the first interchange infringement of... I've seen. In like, terms of going over the cap, something... you don't see it regularly. But no, Ellie was sitting with us and actually brought up a good point. It, I'm interested to know, at the point of the infringement, was the ball actually yeah. down in the pocket? Like, were they onto it straight away? Exactly. Or was there like some sort of delay and the ball moved to the pocket? Or I'd be interested to know Because if that. it was an infringement in the defensive 50, it's not the game changing. Yeah. So like... is it like when the infringement happens or is it when they realise that the infringement happened? Yeah, that was crazy because yeah, the umpire was sitting there going, hold up, wait up, wait up. Oh, yeah, yeah free kick. Yeah, <laughs> right I thought he was checking his multi or something. But <laughs> yeah, um, so. poor bloody North Melbourne fans, my heart, my heart breaks for you on that one. So or lucky Melbourne fans, number one pick. <laughs> no, no chance. They've got a tough, uh, tough uh, team to beat in uh, West Coast to get to that number one pick there. Uh, but let's go to the next game: Western Bulldogs versus. I haven't got who the other game was here, but <laughs> I've played doggies. That one short. Who did the doggies play? Who did the doggies play? Uh, versus Adelaide. So, <laughs> so unfortunately, sorry, I forgot to put that one in there. But best on ground: Bailey Smith. And, no, uh, I don't know if you remember. No, I don't remember. <laughs> on the uh, Friday live show, we were giving out some advice to some people. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I said Bailey Smith, didn't I? I, I, don't, I don't believe you said that. I think there was a bit of a, a rivalry between Bailey Smith and one Lockie and I, Whitfield. I picked Shitfield. What was I thinking? Whitfield 86 against the St. Kilda, who, you know, easiest matchup for defenders. Yeah. And Bailey Smith comes out and knocks out a big one with the, the role there as well. 121, 37 touches, seven tackles. Didn't even have a mark in this game. I didn't trust He normally Bevo. feasts on. He does. He uh, didn't have a mark and he got didn't, one to... Didn't have a mark. Like, yeah, 37 touches with seven tackles. Yeah. That could have been an enormous score if he just got on the back of a few plus sixes. He's easily the bog. And I, um, w- when we had that little debate on Friday, oh, I just couldn't trust Bevo. Um, but, you know, worked out. We'll, we'll discuss him further yeah. later, won't we? Yeah, yeah we definitely very will. Very interesting. So had very a interesting. big game. Big game for those who have jumped on early. Floggery from that game. I've just put JJ's string. Again, I'm not an owner, but it's... Stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> there's I don't think there's a coach out there that's not riddled with bullets oh, like yeah, yeah. We, we've, we've got, got bullet something. holes just yeah, all yeah, through yeah. us yeah. I know other coaches are the same and we've got more bullets coming up this week that we'll hey, talk 44 about 44 is but better than a 3 I'll tell you that much I think uh, yeah, <laughs> it is It is a little bit oh, better 43. but poor, um, poor owners so JJ String if you could have just held on a little bit longer you would have avoided the flog award for that one yeah, unlucky, unlucky for those. But yeah, obviously he is someone we need to trade out. Frio versus Geelong, best on ground. My boy and now your boy. A little bit of a head wobble over there. Andy yep. Brayshaw comes out and goes bang, 135 against a very tough matchup in Geelong where they have, um, you know, they've lost a couple of games on the trot here Geelong with a few injuries to their midfield. So maybe perhaps not quite the tough matchup that it was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and he's obviously come out 33 disposals and 10 tackles kicked a goal in there as well. So big Andy Brayshaw and yeah. uh, he's gone well for me and, and now going really well for you after trading him in. Yeah. A little bit of a kiss move because I, I wasn't, I wasn't sure about trading him in with that tough matchup. You're tossing and up between him and Laird and obviously Laird <laughs> played the game before and he's gone big at 131. Yeah. Laird was going well and Mitch was saying, I told you I should have brought in Laird. And I was like, <laughs> shit, I should have. And then um, Brayshaw went and popped that. So, Kissed. very impressive. <laughs> Um, we have, as our flog for that game, Tommy Stewart, you yep. trading a guy in that you uh, want to go sort of yeah. around that 100 mark. And I think he popped like a mid-70s. The the only thing there, which is good, is he's reasonably highly owned. So yep. it doesn't kind of kill you from a pod perspective. Yeah, uh, first game since uh, round four that he's gone under 88. So 72, obviously not what we want for him, but I do expect him to bounce back. Next game here, Brisbane versus Gold Coast. Just shout out to... Uh, Will Ashcroft and his luscious hair, just <laughs> biggest score of the year for him, 127, I want to say. Uh, yeah, 127 and put himself back up another 51K yeah. just for those who, you know, there are some people who've already traded him out, unfortunately, That'd which, which does hurt. Um, and his, you know, break even still down at 45. So he's probably someone that I'm going to be 
potentially holding throughout the buy. And just that big score on the weekend allows me to do so without losing too much cash there. So good on you, Will Ashcroft. Bit of floggery from Coach Fags in this one. I didn't watch the game, but I just had a yeah. look on the AFL app and um, the, the old permanent marker, Sharpie, has, he, has tactical sub written next yeah. to him. Yeah. Don't uh, tactical sub... Fantasy relevant players. Well, especially after the comments that he had before the weekend, where he was what? saying he just needs some consistency. <laughs> he just needs to get some some games in him. Well, don't sub him. Yeah, man. what can are you, you imagine, talking about? Can you imagine that? Oh. I'd, I'd go to the coach just midweek and say, "Oh, just, do you see? <laughs> Why'd you say this would yeah. sub me out? <laughs> you prick!" And the Karma Lama hit them straight away with, I think, an injury coming to oh, their, their guys later <laughs> after they'd already used oh. the subs. So, uh, yeah, yeah, he got hit with that Karma bus pretty quick. All right, Essendon versus Richmond. Best on ground was my trade target this week. So good trades for the ball boys this week. And again, a guy that you had from a couple of weeks ago, yep. Zaki Merritt putting on a clinic against the Tigers. Uh, one man show in that midfield, although there was a few other worthy names in there, but he just went bananas. And obviously Richmond never going to tag him. So 158, um, great guy who um, a lot of people would have traded in because yep. of that run coming up. So Definitely. rewarded the instant uh, the instant sugar hit that you always want in a trade. It was a tough watch from a Richmond perspective, but it was nice watching Merritt. Yeah. Now, my flog <laughs> is is linked with Merritt here. Yeah. Because watching that game, I thought that Merritt went about 250. You were, you were but like, oh my God, he's everywhere. There's a little fella running around Snelling yeah. like, that from a distance looks a little bit like Merritt. Now, Essendon fans are probably going to go get your eyes checked, Luke, and that's probably fair enough. But every time Snelling he got He looks the ball, dead set like, like the exact <laughs> carbon copy of Merritt. I thought Merritt was going 250, and then I checked, oh, it's actually Snelling. Who's, sometimes that little one, like he's, he's, he's got a, He's 11, 11, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, so like the one you can sometimes, is that a seven? And then <laughs> you just got the same body type or something. But yeah, and so same haircut. Stop tricking me, Will Snelling. You sneaky boy. Yeah, we, we kept getting very excited and going, oh, shit, uh, it's Will Snelling. <laughs> yep. What about the next game? Uh, Hawthorne versus, versus West Coast. Another cash cow and one that I think a lot of us missed. Um, I definitely missed him. Josh Weddle. We talked about him preseason. What's going on? Yeah, he. he I, I just didn't think he had the scoring in him, but coming up against West Coast, bangs out 102, kicking two goals with seven marks, 28 disposals. Just... Absolutely feasted, filled his boots in this game. and um, You're not going to play West Coast every week, but... No, you're not, but I think he's going to go up in cash a whole bunch, yeah. and I'm pretty sure he went up the most amount of cash Ooh. in the round this week. 62,000 increase from last week, and a negative four break even. And guess who he has this week? He has the Saints. So um, if you manage to get him... You Waxing. Know, yeah, you've done well, and uh, he's going to make you some good cash. And uh, I think there is a little bit of learnings to come of this type of player, which I'll, I'll get into later. Okay, beautiful. Uh, in terms of floggery from this game, uh, Dom Shee. I'm glad you put this one in. What? Where the fuck was this? <laughs> <laughs> Where was this? Yeah, this is absolute stupidity. He's gone like close to 140, I think. And this, this is why we picked him. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, so what's his last two weeks? He's gone. he's gone 139, last week went 81, and then the week before, 111. So in his last three rounds, um, I want to say... Oh, let me just double check like his average. It, he's averaging 110 in his yeah. last three rounds. And everyone was on him to start. And if he starts like that, then it's just validation. Perfect oh. pick. That, we look um, like geniuses. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now we look like fucking wankers. Yeah. So um, Dom Sheed, just bring it when we want you to bring it. And yeah. also, like, what does it... So West Coast fans are obviously arguably... Not not arguably. Um, like, they're very disappointed with how their team's going. Mm-hmm. But that kind of says something. If a guy like Dom Sheed's running around, he's racked up 30-plus touches, 140 fantasy points, and your team's got pumped by 120, you probably have to look at your touches and think, like... Yeah, how much value How much actually... impact are you having there? Yeah. But, um, you know... I mean, he's th- kicked two goals, I guess. If, it feels like it's tough being a Richmond fan at the moment, but I can only imagine what it's like being a West Coast fan. So, yeah. shout-out to any of the West yeah, Coast fans. Yeah, one out for your West Coast friends. Make you check in on them. Make sure they're doing all right. Yeah. Um, Carlton versus Collingwood. Best on ground. Uh, just... This guy, Sam Doherty. Yeah. He's a pod now. He's a point of difference. Very lowly owned. He's still quite expensive. But if you, you know, have been able to get up to him since he's come back, he's definitely repaid you. His last three average is 120 plus. Jeepers. Um, and obviously just going big 124 against a tough matchup in Collingwood. Target off the bye? Definitely. Definitely a target off the bye. The, pro- the problem is he's, he is expensive, but okay. like we sort of said previously, he's the kind of guy that can match it with your midfielders. Yeah. So even if you are full on the defensive line, he is someone that you could potentially target as a as a point of difference guy because, yeah, he's just a beast. And, and one of those clear top threes, the, 
the triple D's in the back line that I think we all need to have by the end of the year. Yep. Um, my flog for this one is Vossi. For the same reason as Fags, uh, Ollie Hollands was on track for another really respectable 60 and then he's been subbed right after half time. I... Yeah, it, that was, it was the difference. It was the difference between <laughs> <laughs> you dirty dog. Look at him, buddy. Content as they come. Um, Again, he scored thirty more points than than who I trade into. So. It was the yeah okay. Well, it was the difference between. Um, it was the difference for me between kind of sitting pretty in that match up yeah, with Roy in the yeah, Content yeah. Creators Cup and me. He had a good half too. Sweat and bullets. He, he got subbed at like half time. I Just after say. half time. Yeah, like oh, it yeah, was like early. It, yeah, yeah, I actually I went up to have a shower. I come back and my whole afternoon was ruined. So yeah. Um, yeah. Like normally they wait till three quarter time and you at least get like three quarters of the game. But yeah, yeah at half time, like or just that second quarter, uh, sorry, start of the third quarter. Yeah, he's done. I think that's so. his second week in a row being subbed. Yeah, I think it was. I think he yeah. got subbed out again last week. He was a better score last week, but it's yeah. just obviously something to man- uh, monitor. But he is definitely someone that I think we can all be looking to trade yep. uh, because his price is going to start going the wrong way. Um, the last game on the weekend, GWS versus St. Kilda. Best on ground, Jack Sinclair, who we did speak about as sort of a round 12 target in the defensive line. Came out and went huge uh, with a 140. By far his best score for the year. Yeah. Two goals in that game with 37 touches, eight marks. Um just reaffirms a little bit of doubt in my mind that I had and whether or not he could be that 100-plus averaging guy. Yeah. Uh, but he looked back to his old self on, on the weekend and, um, you know, he has shown that high ceiling before. So he, you know, is lowly owned, but definitely showed, you know, that ceiling that makes him that guy that we want to uh, get into our side. Puts his average back up to 97 uh, or just a little bit more than 97 on the year. Flog from that game, Crouchy. Again, yeah. I, I feel like this is two weeks in a row, but um, yeah, people are paying or people paid big bucks for him, and you expect him to I be I was a considering him actually as an option last week yeah. until L- the uh, lucky didn't. set of field, um, you know, injury. Yeah, so poor bloody Holmes, he's been on him for a few weeks and he got a little bit of the good in there, but he's copped all of the bad. So, yeah, Crouchy he was lift. telling everyone to not not go there, yeah. and uh, yeah, I can't, I can't put my finger on why he's, he's doing so poorly, but um, yeah, just disposals are, are down. He's still at the seven tackles, but less than 20 disposals is just not not going to get it done. All right, so uh, that'll do it for our bogs and flogs. We'll move on to a bit of a, a bit of a news segment here. So, for, for Luke, we've got a little, little sound grab for you, mate. Oh, yeah. There you oh, yeah. go. That oh. brings back some memories. Current affair. Tracy Grimshaw's about to park up at the desk, <laughs> tap her papers. What are we, we talking about? Yeah, that brings a little bit of, bit of gravitas to the, the... Did you used to watch Current Affair? Oh, I'd be in the other room playing PlayStation while my parents <laughs> were watching it, but yeah. Uh, not an avid news watcher, obviously. I was right there. Clearly not. All right, let's... Uh, what have we got? Let, let's run through the biggest news of the week here. Luke. Well, bloody... Clary's hamstring, I think, is going to be pretty big news for a lot of people there. So, yes. interesting, Clary's reasonably highly owned, but his ownership numbers in terms of that, those kind of top thousand teams has yep. been falling. And that's not necessarily because people are trading him, it's because no. people coming into the thousand are people that didn't have him originally. So, and they've been getting those value options, bypassing him. So, correct. yeah. But it will still. It's still influential enough for those, you know, those teams that have him. I think he's about 30% of the top 1,000, and he is. Um, I think he's fairly popular across the the rest of the top 10k as well. And it's been conf- am I right in saying it's been confirmed as he will miss and he will miss weeks like uh, a few weeks or I think I think it's I don't know if I've seen uh yes so we've got literally 2 minutes ago Melbourne Demons um that's handy. We've got an update on Clary and they made me click a link as all oh, uh, websites and roll. Twitter drum seem roll. to do but it doesn't look good is the wording. Jesus come on Melbourne Demons. Yeah, okay. That's still loading. But it looks like he's going to be out a little while. It's not positive. Um, it's not positive. So I don't, I don't The good, I mean, the positive thing in terms of uh, those people that have to move on him is, you know, the world's your oyster, isn't it? Like yeah. you trading a guy that's got such value on his head that you can get really, if you want, you can get really creative with what you choose to do there. Um, but I think, you know, most people would just look to go for another keeper premium option and... So here's the wording. Quit. Okay, Clayton has uh, had some sources at the end of the game following clinical assessment, yada, 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 had scans, shown that he has a hamstring strain. At this early stage, we don't anticipate Clayton to be available in the short term. His return to play will ultimately be guided by his ability to deal with increased loads and reconditioning. Blah, 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 blah. So two I to think, three yeah, two to three minimum. And I think that basically brings him, they've got the round 14 buy. So if we think about him going round 11, round 12, yeah, 
So you just hold him out another round. He's not back till round 15. I, I'd we'll have say to round say 14, by. 14 yeah. yeah. So he's probably he's definitely missing this week. Yeah. If he misses the second week, I think you might as well hold him out for a third. Then he's got his bye. You come back 100%. Yeah. Um, the be- only the only minor thing is if he is like dead set on that um, uh, award, the... Brownlow. The brown load at the end of the year. <laughs> that award. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's been a big day. Got back. Uh, well, I've got some thoughts about the brown low anyway. But, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but if he's dead set on winning that brown low, then I don't know, maybe he like forces the coaches to put him back in so he can oh. get those votes. But like, I'd have to think if they're serious about contending and, yeah. and avoiding any future issues, it, it only makes sense to hold him out to the bye. I mean, at, at this point in the season, it's a trade regardless, isn't it? He's yeah. not pl- he's not playing this week, so it's a trade. You're moving. The only he's annoying- got so much money on his head too, yeah. so you can do him down to a cheaper guy, get another guy, maybe up to a mid price or on the yeah. back of it. The um, only annoying thing is that he was you know inconsiderate to us fantasy coaches and didn't come off earlier in the game to bring his price down. Yeah, yeah, he's still he's still got a lot of a price, and he's still yeah. he's got he's still on his ton run, um, which yeah. you know we'll get to a little bit later. Um, but yes, he is someone that obviously I do think that he is a trade unless we hear. Later on, that it is maybe just one week. Now, speaking of strings, JJ, we alluded to before, unfortunately, for yep. owners. I think he's it, also a two to three weaker as yeah. well. And because he's not someone who's super valuable, I think you just trade him regardless. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, if you look for a silver lining on the JJ one, he's one of those guys that you picked up to make you some money. Hopefully, you picked him up quite a few weeks ago. He's made yep. you that money. Now, you trade him Done up to a job. premium and it's like it yep. doesn't hurt as much. It's even. an upgrade getting him to a, a premium in this line. Yeah, exactly. Even though the 40-odd on the week might hurt, at least you've got a bit of a silver lining there. So, um, in addition to that, we've got Holland Sharp and Drury sub as tactical. Um, yeah. Which just is... highlighting just the the importance of getting these rookies off field. We can sometimes fall in love, with, especially these first-year guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I think maybe... No one's maybe, safe, are they? <laughs> no one's safe. I think... The safer guys are the ones like your peddlers, UK Chandlers, like those kind of guys. And, yeah. But again, they've got role concerns and things like that as well. Yeah. Um, but they seem to be a little bit safer in terms of being subbed. <clears throat> they've had a few years in the system, but these first year guys is starting to get to that point. So, and this is the other thing with like the risk of even someone like a Will Ashcroft. I know he's been doing so well. I mean, the good thing is he's got one more week and he's got his bye. Yeah. So maybe that saves him if he can get through this week without being that sub. Maybe that's enough for Brisbane to say we don't need to rest him during games. But it is just, uh, again, another warning for any first-year guy out there that they are vulnerable to a sub. Yeah, he's playing so well, you wouldn't want a bloody sub him, would you? Yeah, but so was Hollands. So Hollands was doing so well as well. So Yeah. Uh, no. Interesting, interesting things. Uh, little injury scare for Bont there. I think um, bloody the cyclist come from behind and tackled him there, and it looked... Uh, Mate, he was, was pissed that I traded him last week. Yeah, so. I was abusing the TV <laughs> too. I was like, you little prick, I've traded you. Now oh. you're trying to injure my premiums. But yeah. Bont, I think, is good he to go. Soldier on. I think, I think they've confirmed that it was nothing structural. So, so Laddams... Uh, a bit of an ankle injury there and that's less so relevant for Laddams for himself but more so for, um, for McAndrew. McAndrew that's the name yeah. I was looking for so if you own uh, McAndrew he had his first game on the weekend I believe it was Yeah, and so he could be a guy that you scored you know, 66 he, he, might might generate, he might generate some cash now yeah the only flag I will say is that I'm pretty sure Hickey was out with a concussion I want to say do you think that they just go, uh, drop McAndrew and just go straight Hickey, or do you think they might play? I, I think I saw some quotes that they're gonna they're gonna rely on him and, and they're gonna need him, okay. so they might go with a bit of a dual ruck setup. Yep. the The flag there is more so if you're getting him to be a guy that maybe you put on your ground or something like that because he scored that sixty six solo rucks tend to score pretty well even yep. as rookies. Um, I don't know if that's you know, a reasonable thing to expect if he is named with Tom Hickey in the side. So if he's named as a solo ruck, he definitely is a guy that could be on field um, uh, for them or for your fantasy team. And uh, I'll just check. I think they play the first game of the round. Yes, they do. They play the first game of the round. So you'll have a good idea of obviously their team's uh, make up before that and they versus Carlton. So uh, not the best, but also not the worst matchup for, for a ruckman if you want to get a guy on your field. Now, big news that we and a few other people out there, I reckon, would have been pretty happy with was the late omission of Dylan Shield. If yeah. you were a Hobbs owner, you were excited about that. Guilty. If you were a Merritt owner, you were excited about that. Guilty again. Yes. So, um, it, how do you think that influences it? So, assuming that Shield comes back this week, that's yeah. that's my assumption. Um, do you think that influences Merritt or Hobbs? Uh, I think it can. Um, I, I really liked what I saw from Hobbs, just from like a general play point of view. I think Merritt is pretty safe. Yeah. 
Uh, I think Shield is not. He hasn't been like the super high CBA guy for most of the season, but he will come in there and just take a little bit off a few people. I think as well. What did Hobbs, um, Hobbs' time on ground was pretty low. It was, especially that first quarter. He was, I think he played under 50% in that first quarter, but then picked it up. I think he managed to get to 70 in the end. Um, he got 38% um, CBA, so maybe he does go back to that sort of 30. But I would imagine someone like uh, a stringer who had 88% time on ground, 38%, sorry, 98% CBAs, 38% the week before. Yeah. I think he might actually be the one that gets, you know, affected more so. Um, and he is someone that, does see volatility in yep. his in his role week to week. So I don't think it's disaster and I wouldn't that wouldn't dissuade me in trading either of those players in, really. Last little bit of news here we've got um, injury scares for Haynes and Himmelberg. I didn't see these ones. You got you added these to the list. Yeah, so uh, well I think Haynes and Haynes was subbed and I think Himmelberg actually well first of all moved into defense, started the game in defense Oy. um and then was also injured as well. Uh, I can't remember exactly what they were. One might have been a concussion from memory. One might have been a hamstring uh might have to fact check me on those ones, but they both didn't play out the game. Yeah. So what it does mean is if you have someone like uh, a Fleet and uh, the Mac there, um, you know, if you did pick up a Whitfield or, or an Ash or someone like those guys, it might positively affect those guys. Uh, I think Whitfield was getting assessed for a little while. Yeah, a little bump um, on the knee, but he played out the but game. But he played it out. So hopefully, I think that's going to be all fine for him. So he but would, with he the would have scored 120, you not got bumped uh, on the knee. You reckon? Right? You reckon? <laughs> 120, how much did <laughs> Paddy Smith score? One more? He was only like 20 to quarter time when he got that <laughs> knee bump as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so I think he should be fine. But it could also be good news for our boy that we've been waiting for. Faye. Faye. Did you see how big um, he went in the VFL? Yeah, I think he went 160 or something like or that. Or 150. I saw 140. Let me, yeah. let me double check. But yeah, whatever we went, it was, went big it was regardless. Huge. So he might, yeah. again, we've been waiting all fucking season for him to come in. I think I need that 200K rookie too. I was oh, okay. To, so to get the two guys that I want down, he, he, one down to him and then the other yeah, just okay. up to Hobbs maybe. Okay. Okay. But well, I think he'd be a guy that if he does get named, you could launch into it, especially if the injuries do mean some of those guys are out for a little while. All right, let's do a bit of review of this from last Friday. I haven't got the maracas yet. Nah, just imaginary (laughs) maracas still at this stage. So, uh, look... This is another one. No, he did go 160. 161. Yeah, My I told, days. Yeah, I sold went, him short. Went huge. Um, if he doesn't get a game after going 161 with a stat line like that. With injuries galore, like, yeah, I he, don't know. He has to get a game. Has to, surely. And it's not like, you know, someone like a, uh, who was it? Who's the other guy? Ryan Angwin, you know, eight touches. Like, he's not holding yeah. him out of the side, surely. No. They lost. I reckon, yeah. I reckon, surely. He has, he has to be in. Sure. But reviewing our spicy takes, my spicy take... I want to ask, does this... No. Do I get this? <laughs> do I get this? It. Taranto, my spice take was Taranto was going to be the last player on a ton run. Maybe I was just a week too early. You were a week too early. <laughs> I mean, you're guaranteed. Well, well, I'm not guaranteed. Yeah, he has sorry. to hit it. He has he to does. hit it because Clary did get his 100. He did. But maybe I've accidentally cursed Clayton Oliver. I put the moz on him. Yeah, Clary knew he was on the ton run, didn't he? He goes, fuck, my hamstring's cooked. Oh, I need like no. 10 more points. <laughs> 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 got to keep going. Um, yeah, so... Maybe uh, it's not a bad call. Maybe it's going to be one week too late, but Toronto, yeah. if he can get the hundred, pretty he, close, he, he'll he'll be the last one there. Now I was actually cheering against my spicy take on uh, sure. on Sunday because my spicy take from last week was that I anticipated four giants going one twenty plus, and uh, had that been the case, I probably would have lost that matchup with with Roy. So. Yeah. No Giants went Zero. 120 plus. I think yes. we had three over 110. Was that? Uh, two. Oh, yeah. Three over 110. Yeah, Brett Daniels. So you'd give that uh, to me, eh? Yes, I will. Uh, well, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you would have paid attention. <laughs> no, no. I told if you we don't listen to each other, mate. <laughs> four went over 10, I might. But three... Doesn't no, count. No. Uh, no and no, it no, wasn't... No. There was one in there. Was it Brent Daniels or something that was... Yeah, Brent Daniels. Yeah. yeah. Completely out of the blue. Yeah, two no, goals. No, he was one of the ones I was intending. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. How did... Uh, it wasn't Whitfield on 86 at all. How did uh, who was old mate that everyone was trading into that Bales was asking us about? Oh, Ash. How was did Ash, Ash go in the yeah, end? Sixty four. I think Bales actually did trade him in. He ended up sixty four. I think he saved that sixty four too. Yeah, there was he's looking pretty stinky there. So oh, that's rough. That's rough, especially when Hobbs did what he For did. For the record, I, I was not not keen on the, uh, the Ash move, uh, but 
Hopefully he does come good. He does still have Hi- a good run. Hindsight hero. Hindsight Mitch. hero. <laughs> check the tape, mate. Check the tape. <laughs> That's we've got evidence of everything we say. It could be, right. be good. It yeah. could be bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I always said Josh Duncan was going 170 against the Blues. <laughs> You're so good, mate. Okay, what the hell are we doing now? All right, let's going? go on to Trade this. Trade targets? Uh, no, we've got to no. go chop some people Oh, first, chop. I can't mate. bloody miss the chopping block. Okay, let's go. <laughs> you you were late on it. Yeah, I was, like, I was about to do this. <laughs> you, do, you did it on the front of your head on the weekend, yeah, which is weird. Yeah, I'm just a weird operator. All right, <laughs> chopping block. Basically, I think this is going to tie into sort of uh, a hot topic for this week. We, we're one round away from the buys. So anyone who intentionally makes their heat map look like a penis, <laughs> automatic chop. Chop. Get you, him out. You can't be doing it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I won't be trading Errol, but anyone out there with Rory Laird, you can trade him. Um, no, seriously, I think this is the time, and I think it's almost a week earlier than I would normally do, but what I'm kind of foreseeing, and I'm, I'm trying to get my head around how these first couple of buy rounds will go, but I think this is the round almost to get rid of a lot of those red dots okay. and try to get as many green dots onto your field as possible because there are a lot of good rookies and cash generators out there at the moment. Um, so it can be easy enough to move some of those red dots that have like a little bit of money on their head to a guy that's going to help you throughout the buys, provide you with an extra player on your field and generate the cash that you're going to need to to make those luxury upgrades at the end of the season. So plus all the injured guys, so JJ, Clayton Oliver, red dot rookies. And then I, I think if you have a healthy you know, bench and that sort of stuff, then you can start to trade out your topped out rookies and mid prices to make the upgrade. Normally I would say round 12 is the round to do that, but because of the round 13 buy yeah. being so easy, I actually think you're going to have another week after that round 12 where you're already going to have 22 players playing. So you can do some more red dot fix-ups. So you can do some more red dot fix-ups in round 12, okay. because sorry, in round 13, because making an upgrade, you you're probably actually not going to better your team all that much unless you've got a bunch of those round 13 guys, which not many people would. Yeah, I understand. Because making that upgrade, you've already probably got 20 plus players. So yeah. the score is going to drop off. So, you're like, yeah, so the, the upgrade know. on that week is less valuable than doing maybe an upgrade in round 12 because okay. you've got more players on that, but you know, more teams on that buy round. So you're thinking of going, so you're thinking fix red dots this week. Yeah. Upgrade. Do an upgrade round 12. Round 12 and then yep. fix up more red dots. Yeah. And do, do some more little, little okay. moves there. Maybe cash up between round 14 and 15. That's kind of how I'm looking at it this far out. I'll, um, I'll do some more thinking about it before now on Friday, but that's my early thoughts. And um, okay. more so just tying into the fact that we've got players like the accountant, Wardlaw, there. Yep. We've got Bailey Humphrey, who's there as well. Um, Bailey you know, Humphrey's exy now. He is. He is. He even a, he is. So you'd still um, look at him I, as an option. I still option. think he's like an upgrade from a red dot rookie uh, sort of thing. So What's he What's he priced at now? What's I think his? he's in the 400s, 423. So he's about the same, like similar price to what an Atkins was yeah, okay. a couple of weeks and ago. And Hobbs is like a 550 now. Yeah, Hobbs is, yeah, okay. 550. So yeah, there's, there's another example, Hobbs. Uh, Weddle, who's 395. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got some... Other people like so you're trying to t- you're taking a non-playing rookie up to there. Yeah, so you're trying to do like a little switch around. So what I'm looking at this week is a trade scenario where I'm going um, someone like uh, who's that Hawthorne guy? Well, let me have a look at it. Fergus Green oh. to like a Wardlaw yeah. that gives me a little bit of money. I had a bit of cash on my bank as well, so then I can go a Chincotta to a Bailey Humphreys. There's two red dots, so two guys who basically have negative break evens. Um, it's not a traditional upgrade, yeah. kind of two sideways moves, but it does put me in a good position to attack the buys, and I will be because it, it'll be easy to make an upgrade in round twelve because you got you can do a two down one up yeah, uh, yeah, kind true. of situation, so you can get to that big dog where this week you might not be able to do that in one down one up. So would you tick off if I went something like um, Fergus Green to down to Fahey? So if yeah. he if he gets a run, so he gets named, yeah, and then Chincotta to Hobbs, yeah, perfect. That's that's the, awesome. That's the kind of trade, yeah. That, that'd be awesome because obviously there's okay. yeah, two guys that aren't playing, so two guys that are going to be going up in price, give you coverage over the buys. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's perfect. I think that's probably more like the trades that we should be looking at this week than like say if you have a few red dots, then doing like a a Hollands down and a, a mid-price up yeah. sort of thing to a premium, if that okay. makes sense. Okay. Um, at least that's the way I'm thinking about it right now. I'll, I'll sit on a little bit more, but 
Um, just because of that round 13 buy is a little different to the last couple of years. Yeah, I think that can be utilised. Yeah, I, I want to I want to be aggressive on that first buy because typically people are usually using that one to not do upgrades. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like that way of thinking. I let's haven't, have, I haven't yeah. done it long enough to sort of have a distinct strategy, but it's um it's great listening to you, and it's also great listening to like the other the other podcasts as well when they discuss those yeah, things. Yeah, I so will be interested to see uh, other people's thoughts because um, it is yeah a little bit different to how yeah. we would normally do it. Yeah, good opportunity to, to shout some of those out as well. Like make sure that you're um, listening to as many different ones as you can because lots of different opinions can um, help you to make your decisions at the end of the day. So Absolutely. Let's look about, let's look into some trade targets, some upgrade targets. So um, if we just flick that one over there. So in saying that, we, we do have some good targets to go up to. Yep. Um, so we, we said um, some of those cheaper guys in Josh Weddle. Uh, Kane Baldwin, I think, is an also another guy on the cheaper side. So those two guys, if you wanted to do a red dot, I like both of those boys. But in terms of your premiums, guys coming off some big ones this round, uh, this past round, James Sicily is looking really good, has a great matchup this week. There was a quote that came out. I don't know whether you saw I it. Did but see, I did see, yeah. I think Sicily said post-game, he said, oh, I'm... Back to I'm, his free role yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. I'm enjoying now being in a more free role. I can get back to getting the footy. I'm feeling more comfortable. So that's... Um, Interesting. Interesting if he, quote. If he just dropped that big score and... Nothing else. I still wouldn't be. Be a bit skeptical. I would, yeah. But the fact that he's come out and said that we we talked about it since the start of the year. You're not only just looking at scores and numbers. You're looking at the information that comes out. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's a prime example of that. So that's interesting. It is an interesting one because we know he is a guy that has a good ceiling, and uh, yeah, I do think they the Hawks have another good matchup against St Kilda this week. So, um, yeah, it could it could be a big. Big performer for that instant reward and has that round 14 buy. Sinclair obviously coming on the back of his 140. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of times it's points chasing when you go for that guy if they've come off a big one. But for Sinclair in particular, it just re- it just remind, well, not reminds me, but just confirms that he does still have that ceiling because we hadn't really seen that this season yeah. from him. Um, so he is a guy that I do think is a good target. Um, both Sicily and um, Sinclair are around that 800K kind of mark. So. Yep. Um, pretty pretty attainable in terms of getting there from a mid-pricer or a topped-out rookie. And then Doherty is the other guy. So I think those are sort of your big three targets for defense. Um, Doherty is probably a bit more expensive, yeah, but again... Up, 924K. <coughs> because he is expensive, not many teams are going to be able to get there, and um, he will be a big point of difference. And like we said, he's going one, basically 110, 120 the last three games. So he, um, he can put some distance on some of those other defenders there. So if you can get him... So looking to get to those those um, premium upgrades that you were talking about there, you kind of, at this stage, be advising that for people whose bench is already looking pretty good? Yeah, so if your bench is looking pretty good, because a lot of people have been a little bit different to you and I where they've been jumping on the Atkins and they've been jumping on the JJs and the Chase Jones in earlier weeks and things yeah. like that, and they were doing that from some red dots. So there, there are a few benches out there that look pretty good, um, whereas... You know, yours and mine needs a little bit of attending too. So um, I think if, if that was the situation, if you're a similar boat to us, then maybe this might not be the week to go for those top guys. And yep. maybe you look at that around 12 when you can do two down and one up. Um, but yeah, I think if, yeah, like I said, if you're looking pretty good, then those guys are definitely good buyers, I think. Now, when we turn our attention to targets in the midfield, this name I think will stand out for most people this week. And George Wardlaw, he he just did everything in a first game that you'd want to see as a fantasy coach, yeah. didn't he? He he affirmed his spot in the team by Absolutely. tackling hard, by working hard. The amount coach, of, the coach said basically he he played the best first game you could you could hope for. Hey, it was unbelievable. It was so good to watch. It was like uh it was like watching a, a mini first game Zach Butters a little bit out there. Like a in, their, bit, in yeah, their stature, in the like they've both got like a bowl style cut. Of play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. And um, he just went in hard for everything, just everything you could want. So I'm yep. really glad that I pulled the trigger on him and I think there'll be a few people that are following suit this week. Yeah, so I almost think he's he's close to that must-have status just in terms yeah, really. of like his... You don't throw that out often. Yeah, well, just in terms of like the importance we place on cash generation, the the certainty of job security in yeah. a rookie. He's got the round 15 buy, which at this time is perfect because you've got, you know, still four more weeks to run yeah. him up his buy. You can then sell him at his buy perfectly. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to... I, I expect he'll be able to make good money between now and then. Great role. Uh, I just think he ticks all boxes at this stage. And if you don't get him now, he's going to be shooting up in cash pretty quick. So uh, I do yeah. think he's kind of like how we viewed Chinkotta 
you know, a few weeks ago after his first game, I view Wardlaw very similarly. Yeah. Um, so he's, I, I think he's probably one to, to prioritize. And then a couple of upgrade guys. Uh, Rory Laird, I still think, is someone that we need to look at. I know he's had a few red flags, but he's, he's probably, of all the guys here, I think potentially on his ceiling, the most value of the top eight guys. Uh, and then Zach Merritt off his 150, Jack Steele, and Lockie Neal, who's a bit of a cheaper guy there as well. Neal so, went a rod on the weekend as well. He did. And look, the Brisbane Lions, they, I don't know. I they, still don't think I trust it. I don't trust it. I, I definitely prefer those other guys, but I still think Lockie Neal is Lockie Neal. Like, he's still one of the better players in the comp. There's a certain, with, with that caliber of player, there's a certain price where it you just like, you, you almost have to do this. You know it, what I mean? It's the first time the entire season he's gone back to back hundreds, which yeah. is which is pretty crazy. Like round ten, and he's only done it once. Um, but he's got Adelaide and then Hawthorne straight after his bye, so decent matchups. I, I think he can. I think he can provide, you know, that low hundred average. Um, yeah. So if you can get him priced under that, you you know, it's all about looking for value, isn't it? He's priced at ninety five, so you've probably got a decent, a little bit of value there. And if yeah. he's all you can get to, I, I I think I can tick it off. You got a few speculators in here as well. So uh, talk us through Simkin and Wines. Ollie Wines, Jai Simkin are those kind of types where if you can't get to the the big dog, these are the kind of guys that can get you through the buys. Um, both of them have around fifteen buys. Yep. So again, they're a type of player that you bring in now. You're not worried about, oh, do I trade them or do I not come their buy yeah. around? You just trade them. Like, they're not keepers. They're not top top eight guys. Yeah. Um, so, they're a four-week play. Um, Wines, in particular, comes up against Richmond, Hawthorne, uh, the Bulldogs, and Geelong, who, you know, Geelong yeah. have been, been giving up points recently as well. So, he's got a decent run leading up to his buy. It's been very disappointing this season. I'm not expecting the 100 averaging Ollie Wines that yeah. we have seen in the past. He's not the brown like Ollie Wines, but he is still probably an upgrade from a rookie. And he's priced at like mid-70s. So, Like you say, it, I'm, I think I'd be a little bit more high on Simkin than Wines. But like you said, um, the reason that you're getting this guy in is to get you through the buys. And the reason yep. that these guys are, are ones to potentially look at rather than somebody in the price bracket below is because... When you get a guy like this, you're a chance of getting a 115, yeah. but you're not really a chance of getting a 30. That's right. It's Whereas if you drop into that next price bucket below, there's guys there that might give you an 80, but they could also give you a 40 or 30 as yeah. well. Yeah, like Ollie Wines is, yeah, he's had some injuries. I think he had off-season ankle surgery or something like that, but he's he's still one of the better players in his club. Yeah. Like, um, so and he's going he's gonna to still be in that midfield mix. It's, it's definitely something where Butters, Rosie... Jason Horn Francis have kind of gone past him in terms of their focus. Yeah. But he is still someone who he's averaging 58% CBAs for the season. Um, he has had one game in there in round seven where he had 33%, which kind of drags it down. So he's probably 60 plus percent in the middle. Yeah. And um, in a team that has a good run, I think you could do worse than paying 650K for him. Would you take Simkin over once? I, it's under 115, I think Simkin's probably more of a safe bet because he's like the number one guy in his team. Yeah. Um, so I think he Wines scores more. Wines would be lucky more. to be the number four guy now. Yeah. So I think Simkin scores more. Wines probably has a better run and is a bit cheaper. So I wouldn't be upset if you couldn't quite get to Simkin and then maybe you're trading out a worse rookie to get Wines. Yeah, okay. But if you can afford both, then I, I do think Simkin probably averages more. Better off. Between now and then. Uh, what about some forward options for us? Some forward options. Bailey Smith. Um, he's a guy, obviously, he's gone up a little bit. But I think, again, if you can afford that round 15 buy, which a lot of us are heavy on, but if you yeah. can afford to take it, he is a guy that has a high ceiling. And uh, obviously, the CBAs are there right now. Hopefully, he's playing well enough to stay in that kind of a role. They are winning games which is good. Um, so I like him. And let's talk Let's talk about Hobbsy, Ben Hobbs, who's... Uh, well, you, you're you sitting pretty. You've got him. I've so, got him. So but a lot I, of people haven't jumped on just yet. Well, last week I was in a situation where I, it wasn't a trade that I kind of could make. I was, yeah. I was very much in a situation where it was like, get Mills up to a, a big dog. But um, do you think he's a guy that I should jump on this week? So 559K, which makes him priced at 65 I think personally he's an 80 to 85 guy yeah. based on what I saw on the weekend. So I still think that there's potentially 15 to 20 points upside. 
Got that round 14 by perfect. Break even is 35. I think it's not too late to jump on a Ben Hobbs. And Parrish is done to the buys, isn't he? I At think least. that's I think that's the wording that I've heard. Yeah. He's he's out probably until then. Similar kind of thing to Clary. You might as well just hold him out till then. Yeah. So even Shield, you know, Shield comes back. Merritt obviously is playing through there. Stringer was up at 80%. Set a field down to the buys too. Set a field. So it seems like West seems Coast this option, week, doesn't it? Um, North Melbourne the week after. They've got that good run. Carlton the week after that, and then he's by. So again, kind of that guy, you get him in now, three-week short-term play, yep. trade him off at his buy, and then happy days. So I, I think it's got to be this week, I think, to get the most out of his buy run and the good run. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's too late if you didn't get him last week. Yeah, I think I'm going to be bending over backwards to bring him in this week. If it works he out. He good too. Oh, he did look good. Yeah, when he was on the field, he, he looked really good. Um, yeah, I just... I really seven need seven marks, six tackles. I really want Fahey to be named because that just makes makes it feel nicer with the rookies that I'd be trading out. Did you get there with McAndrew? Like the Go the Ruckman? McAndrew, what's he priced at? Like two twenty or something like that. Two thirty. Uh, it's literally within like five k. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. I had three k left in the bank. I can trade other rookies, but they're not to the rookies the I want to trade. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Now, a couple of others on the list. We've got Zach Butters. We've been talking about him for weeks, but if you think that price, do you think it's too at, late? Well, what's he priced at now? Be ninety seven. So he's be priced at price at ninety eight. Ninety eight and a half. It's definitely not as much value as it was earlier. I still think he can do better than this. I think he could be a hundred averaging guy. Yeah, his his thing is, I mean, his thing has always been continuity with injury, hasn't it? So, yeah. um, I think there's still value, and if you're trading him in now, you're trading him in to be a keeper, top six forward. So, yeah. um, you know, it's I think just there's probably maybe more value, more upside in like a Bailey Smith. What's he priced at? He's now? like they're very similarly in price now. Okay. Uh, Butters has gone ahead of him now. So Bailey Smith is eight thirty six. Butters is eight forty two. More certainty in Butters, but so you said True. upside in Smith this week. Smith could get zero CBAs and could go back True. to eighty. And Butters this week again has another good matchup against Richmond. Yeah, you're hundred um, percent right with with Bailey Smith. If he gets eighty percent CBAs for the rest of the year, he could average he could one ten or fifteen. Yeah, um, but the certainty feels good with Butters if you were tossing up between the two of them. Yeah, I, I don't think it's certainty too late. I don't anyway. think it's too late, but you're definitely conceding a loss. Based yeah. on those guys who trade in earlier, if that yeah. makes sense. So, I don't, I don't love it anymore. Um, whereas, like previously, we've been saying, "Yep, let's go, butters, butters, butters." Now I'm like, but the funny thing is, a lot of people we look to trade him in now because he's done his 148. Reminder: you don't get that score. <laughs> you don't get that score. <laughs> it's good to watch, but uh, yeah, he was fucking great to watch. You got Bailey Humphrey in here. I, I just, I don't feel good. It's so funny. I now. said he was, I said he was too expensive last week, and I'm thinking of doing it this week. Um, it's too expensive. Four twenty-three k. Who who scores more? Tell, tell me how many points he scored three weeks ago. Sixty-six. Four weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> he got me Zero. Out, got me out of technicality. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So his last three, he's gone sixty-six, ninety-four, ninety. Um, it's great for the rolling average, isn't it? It's great for the rolling average. His break even is now negative three. Shit. What's he Comes what, up against the Bulldogs how much this week. Does he cost you? Uh, four twenty-three k. So you know, a couple of weeks ago we were getting in Rory Atkins, who was a similar price, uh, who I think had poorer job security. Okay, I'll give you. I'll concede that. I think Humphrey's got better job security, but but now I just think that I'm close enough to the buys that this is now a play I'm willing to do if so I, if if I can get there from a red dot rookie. So, are you doing it for um, his good buy or his cash gen? Which one Both. more? More, more the cash. I think okay. more the cash for me because I've been a team that's kind of, you know, I've chosen to go for like a Mills yeah. over getting a Rory Atkins or, or one of those other sort of cash generator types. It's backfired, yeah. so I need to catch up a bit of cash. My team value is a little bit behind a lot of those top teams yeah. Um, so I need to make a play to do that I think now just the timing of it feels right to me um, but he's probably like Wardour's a priority over him Yeah. Um, probably a Hobbs is a priority over him just in terms of certainty of scoring and if just feeling a bit more safe with, with his place in the team if you had to if you had the choice between trading your red dot rookie to Humphreys Mm-hmm. And you you get your Wardlaw as well, yep. or having to trade a better rookie that does have a green dot to get up to Hobbs. Where where do you stand on that? I, I 
trying to get rid of the red dot rookie at this okay. stage. So you get I would normally say I would normally say the other one, but just because of how close we are to the buys now, this is where I start to go get rid of those red dot rookies and get you know, like he, him and Hobbs scored the same basically on the weekend. They played yeah. a similar role in terms. Yeah, I didn't of, watch. I haven't watched any of Humphreys. Hey, yeah, I, I'll have to. Um, I'll probably have to watch him as well. But as I understand it, he's looked really good the last couple of weeks. Um, let me have a look at his CBAs. So he had 31 CBAs on the 31% CBAs on the weekend. Hobbs had 38%. Um, yeah. And that was with all those players out. So I think they're similar in terms of role. One's 130K cheaper. And has a, and has a better buy. buy. Yeah. Look, I still think Hobbs is a better player. I still think he is a guy that's going to score better. But if it's the difference between you getting a red dot rookie off versus a, a guy who's got more money and is, he's actually still playing, I'd yeah. lean the guy who's not playing. Oh, beautiful. Should we answer some... Uh, oh, do you want to talk about McAndrew or do you want to go... <laughs> oh, lock on McAndrew. If he's the guy that you can downgrade to. Yeah. It's nice having a guy there f- to fill with your ruck line, but like we said, I don't expect him to score 60s, 70s if he's in a dual ruck setup. So, yeah, I think he's yeah, sort of there as a cheaper option to downgrade to. Throw some questions at me. All Pe- right. People on Twitter. Hopefully Luke, someone's asked a question. Luke Rojo 17 um, What do we do if you have the Clary and JJ oh. combo? He well, doesn't we, have Wardlaw Butters or Merritt. All right. Well, we've talked, we've talked a little bit about the fact that obviously those things sting, but at least this guy knows what he's doing with his trades this week. So you go, you've got Oliver oh. and JJ. Yeah. If, how much is JJ now? Is he 600 plus? So Oliver down to. Merit. 645. Oliver down to Merritt. What does that get you? It's like 60K. Only 60K. Okay. And then JJ, how much was he? He's 645. 645. Now, if this person doesn't, doesn't have? have Hobbs, maybe you could go there and you'd be banking a lot of cash. Yeah, it looks do like you it. Do, do you do JJ all the way down to Wardlaw and bank a shit ton of cash? I actually don't mind that move. To be honest, because if there's no one, if there's no one that you can get to, I know banking cash is not your favorite thing in the world, but you've been put in a Probably pretty u- giving up points there. You've been put in a pretty unique situation. So, what about then? Did he say he has Hobbs already? I uh, didn't mention anything about Hobbs. Okay. J- um, so Clary to Merritt, JJ to Hobbs. If you didn't have Hobbs, Wardle's almost got a better role than Hobbs. He's in a worse team, but he was he was. Dead set, a straight <laughs> midfielder. It sucks on the weekend, in this situation because you want to get to Wardlaw, but it seems like a really weird way to do it. It does seem like that. I actually, I would tick off going to Merritt and all the way down to Wardlaw. Wardlaw, pocket, pocket that cash. Pocket that cash. Imagine having that much cash. He said he also doesn't have butters here. Oh, okay. So I don't know how much money. Oh, this guy's name's Luke, by the way. I don't know how much money Must Luke has in, in the in the bank, but if he has a bit of cash, can do just a simple clary to merit and a guy to butters and JJ to butters. Would you do that? Would there be enough to get there? I'm just oh, saying. If he's if he's I don't, I don't know how cash. much cash he's got. Yeah, oh, I would tick that before. I would tick that if you got cash in the bank before the, the huge downgrade. But then you don't. Do you miss on Wardlaw? Can you afford to miss on Wardlaw? It's a lot of. Ca- he's going to make money. He's yeah. going to be good for us. Um, I feel for poor Luke. Yeah, sorry, Luke. I, I I'd I'd be trying to get Wardlaw in and um, okay, get that cash in. You're going to have a lot of money in the bank. Yeah, yeah. but I think if you're going to do that. Round 12, because you've got three trades, you might even be able to do two upgrades and one downgrade. Yeah. Potentially. That'd be if, spicy. If you've got a lot of t- so you might be able to recoup that and, and lock in that cash. So I do think Wardlaw is a pretty important trade in this week. What else we got? Um, anyone in defense worth less than seven hundred and seven? Uh, sorry, 678K or less an option? Um, I would have said, I would have said Angus Brayshaw, but I just don't well. know if you can do it. He's six hundred and sixty-one thousand. Even with Salem in Salem the team, Salem was he didn't back. Look good, did he? Fifty-seven. Oh man! Oh, we thought he was going to go good, um, and just yeah, just didn't get it done. The only sh- shimmering light there is obviously Clayton Oliver is now injured. So is he a guy that now goes into that midfield full time? What be about a- Bailey? What Bailey Dow's popped two tons in a row and he's priced oh he's a little bit more expensive, six ninety eight. Is that what just he's? just no, it doesn't doesn't quite make uh, yeah. that um that cut off. Look, I think you could potentially do Would you go to like an a, Angus Brayshaw? Would you go to Witherden? Witherden's in that price bracket. 
106, 125. How far away is Old Old Man Hearn? Old Man Hearn, I don't know. Do you know how far away? I don't know on that one. Do some do some digging into that. Who asked that question? Uh, Lachlan. We gonna say Luke again? No. Asking too many questions. Yeah, maybe with it and not coming off a few good couple of good scores, but against you know opposition that give it up a little. Shannon bit. Shannon Hearn's so. one to two weeks away. I, I think maybe maybe if you want to go a bit left field, you could do you could do a um. Who'd you say from West Coast? Um, Witherden. Blanking it. Yeah, Witherden. You'd probably feel better about Witherden than, than a Brayshaw. What do you expect Salem to go for the rest of the year? Um, we said he was co- probably like a 90s guy at the start of the season. Yeah. I think if you have that interruption there, he's probably maybe take a bit off that. So maybe 80, 85. Okay. Um, 648. Which is probably not quite enough value. He's basically a straight swap said. for JJ. He's scored 73. I think you could probably wait on Salem. Yeah, just have a look. Yeah, I don't mind you with it and shout, uh, actually, there. I okay. think that might be fine. Um, would you still be reluctant to trade in Steele because of his injury concerns right now? Yeah. Yeah, I think you just wait till after his buy. Yeah, yeah, don't get him now. Get, get, wait one week. Exactly. And get him after you buy after his buy. Hopefully, the buy does him well in terms of resting up. Yeah. His, he still went down in cash. Yeah. His break even is 113. Score. So, yes, he has a good matchup against Hawthorne, but... I think he's the kind of player that I would just be happy to wait for after his buy. Just quietly, that bloke is tough as woodpecker lips, hey? Oh, he is. Like, all he the is. things he's got going on, he's still fronting up for good fantasy scores. Yep. Like, well done, Jack Steele. Uh, who goes first? Pedler, Hollands, or Hunt? Mike or Jaden? <laughs> Jaden. Classic. Classic. Um... Hunt saved his score on the weekend from memory. I think he was looking to stink it up big he time. He had a good then, second half. Yeah, so what did he... 80. Could have been a lot lower. Um, I think Hollands goes. Hollands probably not. Yeah, Hollands, what, sub? Break two, even 76. Peddler's job security better than... Uh, job security in terms of, like, on da- a game day role not being sub. Not Peddler. Subbed, yeah. um, I think back-to-back subs. He's got Sydney this week. It hurts, yeah. At the SCG. It's not a not a ground renowned for wingers. Yeah. I think... Yeah, okay. For me, it's Hollands. Um, his price is going to go the wrong direction. He's, he's break even 76. He's got to 76 twice the entire season. One of them was a 77. Holland's got more cash on his head as well, doesn't he? So Yeah, um, 515K. Yeah, you probably get to what you want with Holland's. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right, uh, let's move on to... Uh, um, Hobbs still good to bring in. Yes, yeah, uh, thinking Wardlaw and Hobbs for Holland's and Jinby. Yep, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, would, that, would that pocket you some cash as well? Um, I'd say I'd say probably yeah, would. Yeah, probably would. Yeah, yeah, probably would. Leaves 175,000. Yeah. yeah, he said. Yeah, so I think that's fine. It's a good uh, thing to do. Oh, the other thing with Bailey Dale, we mentioned before, so John asked, is Bailey Dale an option with JJ's injury? Yes. Yes, I think he is. Yeah, coming again, off two good scores too. Again, it's probably a short-term thing. Um, yeah, he. I think he fits that like Simkin mould, Simkin Ollie Wines mould. Get, get you to your buys and then get him up to maybe, you know, uh, someone you know who's premium in their line on that buy round. And so I, think I don't think he's going to be top six defender. Li- listening to, um, to Selby the GOAT as well a little bit in the last couple of weeks, he's mentioned that in the years where he's been successful, he's gone to that kind of just above mid price a guy to get him through the buys, the guy that can pop out a one yep. fifteen on their day but isn't gonna drop a low. So if you're kind of a bit unsure and your buy structure will benefit from going to one of those guys and you can't quite reach who you want to, you know, there's um certainly merit to it. So Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of merit, uh merit or butters? Um what's butters cost you? Butters cost you 842000 And Merritt's 940 or, or just below that. I wonder if the person is asking this question who is um, filzy here, um, are you trading out the same player to get him and just banking oh, the cash okay. in a Butters situation? Or are you doing a different player? Or are you doing a different player to get to Merritt? Because if you're trading out a worse player, Merritt's run though. Um, so good. It's so good. <laughs> West Coast and then North. Uh, I think... so. I think both of them are probably priced at basically what they're going to do. Merritt is priced at 108. Yeah. Butters is priced at 98. Like, what would you expect them to kind of do? Like, I'd probably almost say that's what they I expect them to average. Yeah. So maybe you go Merritt if you can get there and just lock in that, that midfielder. If, it's, if you're trading for the, the same person. Yeah, think about, look at your team structure and, and if you feel like you're compromising elsewhere to get to Merritt. Then maybe Butters is the yeah. better option. I think that's probably the right so, right way to go about it. 
Yeah, I don't know if we've answered that one, but we've kind of said, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you're just banking the cash, I'd just go to Merritt. Yeah, okay. And just lock that in. If if, you, you, if you're if trading out a shitter player, then maybe Butters. I yeah. That's what you said. Yeah. Let's do maybe two more. Okay. Um, choosing between Caldwell and Humphrey Bebear as his second <laughs> trade this week, <laughs> as Wardlaw will be the first. Who's a better choice of the next four-week period? Caldwell... Leaves one hundred and two thousand, whilst Humphrey leaves nearly three hundred thousand. I think Humphrey Caldwell's an interesting one, which yeah. we haven't touched on yet today. Um, is what's he, he gonna, priced at six hundred and twenty thousand? Which I'm not sure what that is. But if you're going to at. if you're going to Caldwell, then you go in Hobbs, aren't you? Priced at about seventy. Maybe this person's already got Hobbs. Maybe he's already got Hobbs. Yeah, but Caldwell was, looked good on the weekend. He actually scored 112 in a higher CBA role. Richmond. Yeah, but I mean, they've got a good run. I was going to say Richmond league points, but so do their next two opponents. Um, Maybe I we should be considering Caldwell a bit more closely, actually. Your team's going to be full of po- Your midfield's going to be Merritt, Hobbs, Caldwell Just in a second. Just Essendon, give them to me. <laughs> good, good shout there, Ryan. I still think that you go... Oh, you don't like Humphrey as much, do you? Um, well, I, just, I just haven't watched him, so I... I mean, that's probably an oversight on my part. Um, but yeah, I know Bowles was really big on him last week and he, he repaid the faith there. So Caldwell's um, a very interesting shout. I'm, I'm going to have to think about that one a bit more because I haven't have put much thought into him as an option. But at 620K, with the run that he's got, he's obviously come on the back of a big 112, played really well in he, my eyes. He could be a cheaper guy that does the same thing as what um, you were saying Simkin and um, like Ollie Wines kind Ollie of does. Wines, they yeah. were, he could be a cheaper option for that. That same yeah, output. and his break even is obviously a little bit lower, so he's going to at least make you a bit of cash. So yeah. I don't mind the shout of Jai Caldwell. Um, if they both have the same buy round, maybe Humphrey gets there with the buy. Yeah, I'm uh, not helping this guy very much, but I think <laughs> I think I'll, I'll research that one a little bit more. But I do like the Caldwell shout there. So. That's, uh, that's one that we'll, we'll research between now and Friday if you are listening on the live show. And uh, the last question I'm going to leave you here from Brisbane Bloods Fantasy. Can we look at Dom Sheed? No. No, I don't think so. You can either. No, but he's too... fucking hell, Dom. Like yeah. 721,000. What were we looking at him at the start Break of the year? Break even of 40. At the start of the year, he was 590, yeah. I think. So he's made a bunch of cash. He's gone up 130,000 since we started. It's just, it's one of those just such a waste. Is it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it it's, is such a waste. It's such a waste. You look at that and you think, yeah, that's what we were expecting. And you did, everyone got off you. And then you went and did it just to, just a waste. So, yeah, he's gone three sevens yeah. to start the year. And now he's averaging 110 the last three. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't jump on that with much confidence. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. He'd probably come out and drop another 120. <laughs> like, let's be real. First thing Essendon. But no, I don't think he can go there. Uh, very nice. Should we wrap this thing up? That will do us today, guys. Um, yes, thank you for viewing along and make sure if you are uh, enjoying the content, give this video a big thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. Make sure you guys are subscribed as well. And if you do spot any penis heat maps out there on the weekend, <laughs> tag I us. forgot about the dick maps. <laughs> tag us I'm over on Twitter at Ball Boys Fanny, Fantasy. Fanny. And- <laughs> Jesus. I'm just right. wrapping up. Uh, <laughs> or at Luke Rojo 17 But until next time, guys, we will catch you later. <laughs> See ya.